What's this guy doing? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's back again, and this time Kevin's here. Hey, hey, man. What this you fucking <laughs> You like getting your ass out too much, man. <laughs> Basically, because that boost tee that I got didn't do anything because it's broken. The one that I got off Matt, I got a HKS EVC. So that's the actual like module thing. That's the controller goes in your cabin whatever and then that's all the wiring for it but first we're gonna go get some mad greasy burgers at least Jamie knows how to use a camera all my other friends don't I'm like, <laughs> film and they're like how do we do this <laughs> I'm like oh alright so I got my alignment done at Fulcrum Suspension in Kapala. and the only other company I've been to before that was Kmart Tire and Order at the plaza I work at because like even though they suck I thought that maybe they could stop my wheel from, at least stop my wheel from rubbing, which they couldn't do. When I got it back from Fulcrum, they said that the tie rod wasn't even tightened down properly. Um, it was loose and floppy, so it came up tire and auto, loosened my tie rod and didn't tighten it back up. Alright, so I'm going to do a uh, pull and you can watch the boost gauge and see that it's making like, just like about 0.6 miles. What is that? So we're back home now, just got some food, cars in the driveway. So basically how this thing works is it has a vac line, an inlet and an actuator line. So the vac line is used to um, monitor your boost pressure. The inlet and the actuator line are used like as your, what do I, how do I explain it? The inlet and the actuator lines, they kind of work like a normal boost tee, but you just are able to control how much pressure gets let through using the hand controller that goes inside. You can adjust it from inside without having to get out of the car, so it'll say an actual PSI reading on there and you can change it to whatever PSI you want. What do you reckon, Jamie? 12 or 14 PSI? 20. 20. Yep, alright, let's go with it. I'm gonna try use this 3mm line with a 3mm T piece. The other line that we have that we have to tee into is a 4mm. So that's this line here, this one. Um, that runs to the boost gauge sensor. We're gonna run it down to here, which is where we're gonna mount the, the EVC sensor. Should be enough line, um, and it should get an accurate reading even though it's 4mm line with a 3mm piece. So we'll see. So we're thinking there for the um, controller install. I mean, it's probably the most factory looking spot. Yeah, we've already got the lines done Pumped from the there. failed boost T install. It does nothing. Yeah, literally <laughs> nothing. So it's hot today. Beers. So yeah, beer break because it's freaking hot today. I, I um, hit Jamie's beer and now there's beer all over my driveway because it went everywhere. Your dog, it's old comrades. Yeah, dad's old comrades. <laughs> That's fucked up. Come rags from the daddy's cummies. <laughs> yeah. What's this guy doing? There we go. <laughs> do you sing any like religious songs? Do I sing any? Yeah, do you know the song that's like, Go my son, climb the highest ladder. Never heard of it. Oh. So Caleb's putting up the T-piece on the vacuum line. It goes over oh, and no. joins onto the plane on there. We're just kind of doing it, um, leaving everything um, long. And once we know it all works, we'll cut it down and try and tidy it all up. Doing the old coat hanger thing again because it really helps get wires through the engine bay to the cabin. So as you can see, Jamie's putting the coat hanger through the grommet again. Jamie's just trying to pull the coat hanger through right now. There you go. So now all we're doing is grabbing this plug here um, and we're taping it to that coat hanger. Now we're pulling the coat hanger through and that'll pull this up into the engine base so we can plug that into the module. Oh, I see it. Yes, you got it. Oh no, it's coming off. Oh no. Jamie. Are you sure? Yeah, look. 
This happened to us last time too. We thought we were better prepared. Aha! Uh -huh. Aha! Uh -huh. Look at that. So Jamie's just sorting out some wiring now. What I think we agreed on doing was putting the um, ground to the ground that the defy is in. That, that one there where we did the defy one on that little bolt on the side and then the power one on the... That's the ignition power there. That's the ignition power for the defy so we're going to put it on that one too. That's how we go and do it. Yeah. And then I'm going to get mad boost. Shout out to Asahi. Back on that beer game again. Hey, Dad. <laughs> uh, we're pretty much done, actually. I'm just about to disconnect the battery, and we're going to test that the controller turns on and works first. So we've got everything roughly connected up for right now. We're just going to test. Please turn on. Oh, yeah, What's boy. What's happening? What happens if you click that? I have no idea. I should really look up the manual for this thing. What's pH? I don't know what I'm changing. So after having a little bit of trouble trying to figure out how to set it, we think we kind of have set a PSI. We're just going to go for a little test. Dude, I'm freaking out hardcore. What the fuck was that? We just ran over something. There's some really weird like boosting happening. So it was going up steadily. But when it was set at 14 PSI, it was coming up as only um, 9 PSI. So don't know what happened there. We're, we're going to try figure out if the back lines are on wrong or what. And if not, then we'll just probably leave it at the 8 PSI because that's like stock. So that's all good. And we're also going to tuck all the wiring away and stuff. But we'll figure out what's going on. I'll have a play around with the HKS and try to figure out what exactly it is doing. As always, we're working late into the night trying to fix the things that went wrong while we were installing it. Jamie's just putting the controller up on my dash now and tucking all the wires away. I'm just tucking all the vacuum lines in the engine bay so it looks as factory as possible. And you see there's the controller there. Now I boomed it because it got really hot in the original spot so we've moved it over here. Um, looks fairly factory if you don't know what you're looking for. like. Obviously the control is sort of right there, but if you don't read it, it kind of just looks like some random solenoid. And I forgot to show last time, when we did the defi gauge, I also, what are they called? Oh yeah, blitz. <laughs> radiator cap. I put on this blitz radiator cap. So as you can see, Jamie has tucked all the wiring from here in behind the radio and whatnot. He's just putting it back in now. I'm going to help him out. So I'll put the camera down and show you when we're done. Oh, and we mounted the... EVC already. It is mounted right there. It's mounted there next to the steering wheel, so that's pretty cool. kind of not clear last night because we finished right in the dark uh, how it looked and what was going on so I'm gonna quickly show you how it looks in the engine bay and in the interior because it's a really clean install I'm really happy with it and I'm also going to explain the problem and that I figured out how to fix it we were having a weird problem last night where we had it set to 14 psi and it was only getting about 8. Figured out that there's a little offset mode so you can kind of, if you're not getting off boost, crank it up. You're calibrating how much air has to get through for it to reach that desired boost pressure. So I'm going to do that as well um, to make sure that it is boosting what it says it is. And yeah, so I'm quickly just going to show you guys the install now. So this is what it looks like in the car. Um, you can see it a bit better now that it's daylight. We ran the wire just into this little gap right here that goes between the steering wheel and the trim. 
and we ran that wire into the back here to get the power and the ground and then through there up through the plug over to the controller which is in the engine bay which I'll show you in a minute so this is what it looks like when it turns on that's what it looks like set up there so so yeah, the reason we moved the um, actual actuator was because I wasn't happy with how hot it was getting um, sitting right above the turbo. So it was sitting, that bracket right there it was sitting on. Now we've moved it to the front here. As you can see, barely can tell. It pretty much looks factory sitting right there. But So we've run the wires down here for the, the three vac lines and the wires are just tucked behind there. Um, so the wires are... Uh, pretty much zip tied to this back line the whole way because they come go to the same spot which is up the back of the engine bay um, These two are zip tied together for a little minute Then they split apart right there oh, yeah. You can sort of see that so split apart right there one runs down to the wastegate down there The other one runs behind here over into the intake my back line for that actually just lets it monitor what boost pressure the engine is actually getting. So that runs down here, attaches to this line until here, and then detaches and it and the wiring harness run back underneath here, down that factory wiring harness there, then back under my ABS module up to here. So here is where I have teed in, which is where my my boost gauge is teed in from over there, and I've just teed it into the line that I ran across the back of the engine bay for that. And then the wiring harness runs down through the plug, which you probably can't see, I'll try. That plug there that you can barely see is that brown thing right there. That's where this main engine loom runs into the cabin. So I've just poked a hole in the side of that plug, pushed it through there and into the cabin. Also quickly just took a minute to hang my Fusa not to match my Kiku knot. So that's pretty cool. So I hope you enjoy that video guys. Um, my car is going to be making a little bit more power now so that's good. And I'll find out exactly how much power once I get it tuned finally. So yeah, if you liked the video then hit that like button or chuck a comment in the comment section below. And if you really enjoy what you watch and you want to see more, hit the subscribe button and stay up to date with the videos I put out in the future. Alright, have a good one guys. Burnout. <laughs> one wheel peel. Dude, where the fuck is the teardrop that It's the like next street up. Fuck. Do it, Yui. Jesus, you are sketchy. <laughs> Skids.